Good morning, fish heads. This is your weekender version of the workshop update at Jekyll Bates. I'm your hostess with the mostess, Jen Cravasi. I have a lot to do, and we're over here at the spray desk because I have a lot of other stuff over there, and I don't want to confuse the orders. This is all going out this weekend, um, and I still have a lot to get through. These are orders, so as soon as we can get this done, I got to get right back to work. But I wanted to show you some of the pieces that are going to be going out first up took a little poll to see what you guys might want this to be called and I got tons of like almost a hundred comments on this thing so wow you guys are really invested in Jekyll Bates right now and I really appreciate that so three things it could have either been my bloody Valentine which is my personal favorite but that's just because I've always been hung up on Halloween um, the other one tainted love or Queen of Hearts overwhelmingly this is going to be Queen of Hearts um, almost 60% of you voted for Queen of Hearts, which was C, the third choice. Next up was My Bloody Valentine, so thank you. Um, and then Tainted Love. But lots of great response on this. This is a wiggle wart pressing, um, pressed from a pre wrap of a mold available at Dinger Bates. And I think Cedar Run might have it as well. I'm not sure if it's the same one. Um, but we'll get this little guy under the light here. You guys can see it. Queen of Hearts. There you have it. Very cool. Okay, lots and lots and lots and lots. This is a Panko Frog, Poison Arrow Frog. Yellow and gray. You guys should be seeing a picture of the familiarities between the two. And this is done on a Dinger 120 SP suspending handcrafted eyes. I sprayed those in myself. Here is the red and blue poison arrow frog. Also Dinger eyes on this one as well. And this all got started, you guys have been asking me to, to spray various versions of the Poison Arrow Frog. First of all, they're really cool, beautiful frogs. If you don't know what they look like, go look them up on Wikipedia. Just some amazing colors. They're uh, Amazon frogs, and it all got started with the spray session last week, which was a patriotic Poison Arrow Frog. So instead of the blue and black, which is traditionally what it looks like, I did a red, white, and blue with just a little bit of black accenting on the head. So I like the way they turned out. This is a Bandit 300 series. Not a knockoff. Like I said, preferably I like to paint the real deals. And this is going out to uh, Mr. RJ. This is one of his. He's got a bunch going out. But he wanted a, an autumn theme some brown, some yellow, some orange, the, the classic crackle veining, and we did some hot iridescent red eyes for him. This will run 10 to 12 feet. This is the Havasu Craw. Red eyes, a little bit of almost fluorescent. This is called a electric blue iridescent blue on the nose. And this is part of that big order right there. And this is in that Dinger wide-lipped square bill pressing. This is a uh, an Eastern Japanese inspired paint. And this is the uh, the Sunrise. And this is all done with an airbrush, very low pressure, to make those little suns on there. This is in the uh, specialty line on www.jekyllbaits.com. Fun bait to do. Gold head, bright red. Spring fever. And a 2.5 holographic square bill. Transparent paint so that you can still see and you can see it right there flashing in the cheeks. And you can actually see it all over, but the lighting on this part of the 
studio over here is a little bit, um, it's more conducive to painting than it is to really showing the baits off, but I've got so much crap on the other desk that I had to do this here. This you can really see the, but this was the, the request of the customer. Um, this is the Red Craw, the Red Hollow Craw on a 2.5 holographic. is an old choke canyon. All of these are primarily on the, uh, the holographic images. You can see that flash in there. Also along the specialty line, this is the kaleidoscope pattern. This black mist chrome eyes. is the also that uh, that pressing of the wiggle wart and these are right you can see I still have the drip wires attached to these guys this is that scarab beetle oh my hands are chewed up in the winter time you know, using all the cleaning solutions and stuff for the airbrushes um, I try and use gloves as much as I can but I've got small hands so Unfortunately, any glove I put on my hand is not big enough, or is not small enough, rather. Just a few patterns here and there. This is that Nest Raider pattern, also on a holographic, with iridescent paint. Now, again, these have just, just, just come off of the, uh, the clear coat rack. Candy corn, great this time of year very transparent. You guys can see through that. Hold it up to the light. And the clown. Gotta love the clown. That yellow belly. Just a little bit of random speckle. We've got hot tuna with those fluorescent eyes. You guys are always curious about what kind of meshing I'm using on this. Normally I use Pellon Wonderweb, but I'm completely out of Pellon Wonderweb. So yes, dryer sheets. You gotta run them through the dryer first. They've gotta be used dryer sheets. And I usually try and run them through the dryer two or three times because you don't want that scent on there either. But these are unscented. It's just to soften the, the fabric in your clothes. Um, I usually not that we're going to give away laundry secrets on this one, but hey, why not? Um, I normally use a liquid fabric softener in the wash that is scented and then unscented dryer sheets specifically for cool stuff like this. So there you have it. The hot tuna. And this is like an art deco perch. Love that bleeding up on top. And I call it bleeding. It's a paint bleed. Um, and that can be produced with two specific types of paint, one on top of the other. Um, and it's a neat effect that I really like uh, specifically for baits like this. This is also partially transparent paint because it is on a holographic. And uh, these warp presses were from Predator on their holographics. That's a little yellow perch. Very effective. Very, very, very effective this time of year. One of my favorites. We are through those, but we still have a few more to get through. This is that hard, um, let me show it to you real quick. It's a three-piece hard stencil, and this is from Jonas Summers at Lower Color Studio, so look him up online. Um, it's a three-piece, and it's a real good cross stencil and there are four of these I will show you one of them love these cross stencils Greg that's going out to you you already know it's coming and then trials and tribulations of foiling but let me show you how it turned out this is an old discontinued color uh, man's baby one minus that's in an autumn brown holographic so the foiling was done 
by me underneath the undercoating it does give that flash and pop and then a root beer fading up to a like a really dark burnt umber on top and this is a, a group of ten so at customer request he asked for all different eyes and that's that's a great idea um, fish them all it's possible that your target fish your bass might key in on specific eye color and in the next order you'll be able to kind of narrow that down you really want to see what works in your area but just uh, some of these eyes are brulee or brule which are available through Amazon and then some of them are dinger and some of them are from John I think the last one was from John at Jetson and these are dinger eyes but it is a uh, the, the foil, the underfoil, is called oil slick, and it's a really cool pattern. But just great time with these little baits. So that's it. As always, thanks for spending a little bit of time with the channel. I uh, hope you catch a few if you're out and about. And if not, if you're going to be at your spray benches this weekend, happy spraying. Cheers.